Hi, uh, my name is Ashley. Um, I'm a volunteer at a small no-kill shelter in Pennsylvania. I've been a volunteer there for nine years, so I know kind of, um, obviously it's not the size of ACC, but I know the basic goings-on of the shelter. And I also help to network um, similar, um, help to network animals that are on the at-risk list. And every night we see them. And every night from 6 p.m. when the list goes out until 3 p.m. the next day is just completely frantic for the volunteers that are trying to place these animals. Um, and then when I look, there's volunteer pages that run to help network. And when I look at the volunteer pages, they have 79,000, 17,000 likes, involvement from people. And when I look at the ACC at-risk page, it has 3,000. So uh, there's a bit of a disconnect for me there as to where the networking is, where the outreach is. Um, the second issue that I wanted to bring up and the most glaring issue to me is the consistent killing of healthy, treatable, adoptable animals. Mm -hmm. They're listed at risk mm -hmm. because of sickness that they contract at the shelter. Um, the behavioral issues, the behavioral assessments are often contradictory to what we see that's posted by the volunteers. Um, there's animals that have been pets their entire lives. They're good with children. They're good with other animals. And then they're dumped at the shelter, and a couple days later, I see that they were euthanized. And there's always, it, it feels somewhat like a scapegoat, an excuse as to why they, they had no choice but to put them down. And it just seems very, very much like an excuse. Being nervous or fearful is not a behavioral issue to me. That requires euthanasia. I think euthanasia should be reserved for animals that are not going to get better, whether it's medically or behaviorally. And then I think everyone touched, I don't want to reiterate, so I want to just keep it concise, but animals who need placement the most, the seniors, the ones who are cautious, the ones who are sick, are usually the ones who get the least amount of time. 6 p.m. to 3 p.m., most of those hours are overnight. People don't even know that it's going on. Um, they have no time to fill out, you know, work with the rescue organizations. The spay, neuter, kill issue, um, I think that was brought up a couple times, but it was first brought to my attention with the dog, Hannah, who was stated by Ms. Weinstock that that was an anomaly, that was a rare instance. Since Hannah, there have been at least 14 more spay, neuter, kill dogs. One last week, Chloe. She was listed as, you know, her assessment behavioral was treatable. She had some behavioral issues, but she lived with children. She was hand allowed handling. And then she was spayed, and a couple days later she was killed due to the kennel cough, which you've heard is like the common cold. Um, I don't want to take up too much time, but I just feel like I don't want to be patronized, and I don't want others to feel like they're being patronized. I think mm -hmm. New York needs to do better, and they need to be leading. And the CAPA um, bill discussed, is it perfect? No, but it has proven success in other places, so I think it's something that we need to look at, and I think that we need to try harder.